Let's hear your Bible story. Well, today's story, and, 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 and I don't, the, today's story is about Jesus and him healing the 10 lepers. Jesus and the healing of 10 lepers. And the healing of 10 lepers. Were you one of the lepers that he healed, or is that, is that what brings this to mind? Now, actually, if you let me finish my story, you oh. might be a little surprised. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think of you as a leper, though. I think of you more as a. Well, well, you know what? You might not think you might not think of me as a leper, but if you listen to this story, you might see where this is going to go. Oh, okay. You like all right. Well, go ahead. Knock it out. Now, first of all, remember I told you back in the day that when Jesus moved around, he moved around like a rock star. Yeah. Yeah, I told you that. And like and, Peach Cobbler. And and, and and he created a crowd wherever he went. Remember, we talked, we, we talked about the lady that said that the lady was sick, but she said, if I could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I would be made whole. Yeah. Well, see, I found this story about the lepers interesting because the lepers couldn't do that because the lepers had to be kept separate from society. The lepers had to stay in a group by themselves. See, now you just said this, but to me, this kind of sounds like how America is starting to treat their unvaccinated people. Mm. See, they're put over here. You're considered to be an unclean people. And one of the things. Uh, that's what the word is. Yeah. Unc okay. Yeah. And, and the thing about it also is they had to stay in that group. If you got caught being mixing out in public, the, the, peop the public had a right to stone you. OK, so this was very serious. Wow. You start to bring this home. Go ahead. OK. And, and, and so they can't get to Jesus, but they're screaming for Jesus. 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 Now. You call on Jesus, name. So Jesus like they must know me. So Jesus goes over here to talk to him. Now, you know, this is not making the disciples very happy, you know, because Jesus going over talking to these unclean people. The unvaccinated. Yeah. And, and they like, come on, man. But the Jesus like, what can I do for you? They asked Jesus, they said, can you help us? Can you help us with our condition and what we're doing? Because, you know, can you help us? And, and what I liked about this was Jesus didn't heal them straight out. Jesus told them, said, here's what I need you to do. You need to go seek the advice of the high priest, the wise man. So in other words, what Jesus did was he sent them to seek a second opinion. Mm. OK, now, you know, I had this similar situation actually in college. OK, I had a, a drip okay. and I actually <laughs> called on Jesus <laughs> and I had to go see a doctor about that. But this was back in college, back at a different whole different time. But go ahead. You know, it's just amazing. You just don't burst into flames. <laughs> Listen, now I was going to say yeah. that it kind of reminded me of when I went to the doctor on Thursday. Mm. And I went to the doctor on Thursday and you know as well as I do, that doctor said, Jim, you got to go see a specialist. That's, that is accurate. Okay. And, and, and see, I had to go see that specialist on Friday. See, like I told you, Jesus didn't heal them straight out. See, 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 Jesus, it, it wasn't until they was on their way to see the specialist that they was healed. OK, so in other words, they had to do that act of faith to be healed. Now, here's where the story gets good at, because he healed all 10 of them. But it was only one of them that stopped in his tracks and turned around and told Jesus, thank you. It was only one. OK. And it reminded me of when I went to the doctor on Friday. Because I told you when I went into the doctor, when I went to see the doctor, the doctor said, I don't know what happened. But he said, your body has healed itself. I told you, the doctor said, Jim, we had you scheduled for surgery on Friday. We was ready to take you down and perform this, but you're healed. And I don't know what happened, but bro, you good, so... You can go. Mm. Now, you asked me yesterday, you said, Jim, 
What did you learn from Corona in your time being off? And what I learned was I had a lot of people looking out for me. People talk stuff, but you honestly looked out for me. You cared about your boy. I'm trying to lay up and die from Corona and you would not leave me alone for a minute. And I appreciate it. I had Gaston Mooney who got me a doctor, got me a nurse that came to my house every other day and checked on me. My mother sent me a video of Pastor Clark in the Hattiesburg Missionary Church. And he started off his prayer and he started off his prayer praying for my home. For your home? Praying for my home. Uncle Jimmy's home. Yes. And then he prayed for my sons. And then he prayed for me. I got an auntie who has a prayer group at her church that was lifting up my name and lifting up the name of my kids. And, you know, you talked about me being passed out in an ambulance getting called for me. Man, my 15-year-old son, Ducey, you know, the little dude with the braids, the little dude that sometimes had the pants coming off his butt and I get upset about. Man, I'm laying in the floor. I can't even lift up my own head, man, and my 15-year-old son picks up my hand. And my 15-year-old son said, God, I'm lifting up my daddy in prayer. So I'm telling you, man, I raised a 15 year old son that this 15 year old son knows that when times get hard, he knows he can reach out and he can call on the spirit of Jesus to help his daddy. See, Jason, it's not the fact that God don't help and bless people. It's the fact that people don't stop and tell God, thank you for the blessings and the goodness that he's brought for them in their life.